Good evening and welcome to 89U Music View. I'm Michael Dugan. I'm Susie Albright. And with us we have in the studio uh, Bill Million and Glenn Mercer from the Feelies. And uh, why don't you guys just introduce yourselves since even though I already did that. Hello, I'm Glenn. <laughs> Hello, I'm Bill. And uh, why don't you tell them who isn't here from the Feelies? Uh, well, Keith isn't here. <laughs> and Andy. And that's the uh, bass and drums, uh, respectively. Right. right. And you guys do basically everything else, right? We play guitar. We play guitar and sing and stuff. Yeah. How long have the, uh, the feelies been together? How did you guys all get together? We've been together about three years. Uh, I knew Glenn for like a long time. We had like similar musical tastes. And we started playing together, not really with the intent of like forming a band, just uh, just started writing, mm. found the need like to play, play with other people. Did you start off as a garage band, play garages and... No, we've always played in the basement. In the basement? Yeah. In your basement? Yeah. <laughs> um, when, was, when was the first time that you played to like people? Was that at CBGB's? Uh, well, we had <coughs> played in New Jersey at a few high schools. For like, like dances? Yeah, we did our own material and some other cover versions. And uh, we did about three or four jobs in New Jersey, and then we went to CBGB's. Did you produce the uh, Rough Trade Center yourself? Yes. On a limited <laughs> shoestring budget. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, like a small studio. Just over a period of like a few days, we did our demo tapes, did four songs, and chose two out of the four for the single. You started getting um, good reviews in The Voice around then, like like Chris Gallant wrote a few good things about you. Did that like help out? Yeah, it did. Uh, no one had written anything about the band up until that point, and then John Piccarello from The Voice did a story. Why don't we break now and hear a song from the Feelies from the Crazy Rhythms album. This is a song called Forces That Work. Should we sing along? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, uh, we're back. There's a song called Forces of Work. It sounded really good here in the studio, <laughs> blasting through the speakers. Um, is there anything special you want to say about that song, or about the writing of it? Or did you both write it together? Yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. Do you is have any uh, influences? Uh, I, I just wanted to say this, because the, the guitar solo on that song, I loved it when I first heard it, and it sounds a little like a uh, little Ravi Shankar-ish, like a little influenced by that. Do you guys... Yeah, that, in, that song in particular was very uh, Indian-inspired. Yeah. What are some of your uh, particular influences that you grew up with? That you said you had uh, common musical tastes. Is there anything, anyone in particular that sticks out? Uh, a few people like the Studios, the Velvet Underground, mm. the Beatles. <laughs> you spent a lot of time um, in, in um, producing the album, trying to make it sound a lot different than you do live. Yeah, we weren't like happy with our live sound for like a real long time. It's just at this point that it's closer to the way we sound on record. It was like real indistinct, like the guitars kind of blended too much with each other. You think the sound of the album, you think you, um, you make um, the consumer try to have to sit down and listen to the album rather than just put it on and, and play it once through and they have to kind of like work at it to really enjoy it? Yeah. We did do that. I think it's a healthy approach. Why is that? I don't think I well, turned people off. They would just they just listen to it once and say, "Oh, I don't like this," and never listen to it again. Well, it could be, but then or you it's want to like educate the consumer. It's their problem. Yeah. Well, there's nothing like more interesting than hearing an album like after five years and discovering you know something new on it. And most of the bands that most of the music we've listened to, that's true. You know, a case like The Velvet Underground or like you know. You know, even bands like the Beatles, you still hear like new things. That's true. Is, what is it, um, your feeling about studio and live performance? Is, is there a drastic difference there as far as your personalities are concerned and stuff? What, how do you feel about it? Do you like any, either one? Well, I prefer the studio to playing live. I think more relaxed in the studio, more in control of all the elements. Mm -hmm. But it's great to have like the feedback of a live audience when you're playing something that you wouldn't get in a studio. Yeah. It's just two completely different worlds. Okay, uh, we have to break for another song. Um, we're going to play Raised Eyebrows now. This was originally on the Rough Trade single. Was it the flip side or was it the A side? Or was it both A and B. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Both sides. Anyway, uh, it's, it's now can be found on Crazy Rhythms, and this is the feelies and Raised Eyebrows.
Again, that was uh, raised eyebrows from the Feelies, and uh, it's, how how important is your is your music to you? Is it your life or no? It's not your life. <laughs> we would die for it. That's a, I know. Well, probably a lot of listeners might say, "Wow, it's not your life." What um, if you had to leave music, you know, or for some reason, or say, let's just say it didn't work out, or you got tired of the hassle bored. of the industry or whatever? But but what do you think you would do? Do you know? Um. I'd probably pursue like an art background if I went to school for that. Oh, you did. But I'd probably get sick of that eventually. <laughs> How about you, Bill? So I'm not really sure, you know, what I do. Just wait for that time to come. How is it to manage yourself? What do you, is it uh, hard? Is it hard to do it yourself? Yeah, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you'd like to have a manager? Yeah. And just a matter of finding someone that you all get along with? Yeah, right. Um, does ever, do, do the other two guys in the band live in New Jersey also? Uh, well, Anton lives in New York. Keith lives in New Jersey. Uh-huh. And so, and how often do you guys rehearse together? Well, before a job, we rehearse uh, several times a week. Mm -hmm. When we're not playing, it's real relaxed. Mm -hmm. Just get together to jam. Or is, um, speaking of Anton, is he, like, much different from you? Like, he, does he like to go out and play live shows and and so on. Yeah, he likes to play. He play all the time, <laughs> if you let him. Have you guys done um, any work? Since you don't do a lot of uh, intense performing all, all the time, you know, always together and, and touring and stuff, do you have time individually to work with anyone else, or would, would you like to work, you know, separately away from the feelies? Does anyone do that? Well, we work with our tape decks uh -huh. quite a bit. No one outside that, though. Uh -huh. Playing around with Frippertronics and tape loops and stuff. Mm -mm. Have you um, done any writing lately or are you just kind of letting it flow until you decide to work on the next album? Or are you writing all the time? We write all the time, not necessarily songs. They might be just born, you know, drawn out jams or just, you know, like instrumental type things. We really don't think in terms of like writing a song start to finish with, you know, verses and solos and stuff. Is music always going through your head? Like while you're jogging, you hear, you just like hear a tune and it'll just. We don't jog, we run. You like, run. Make a correction. Yeah. There's a difference. Jogging you, you for dash. Like people. Yeah, we dash. <laughs> how, how far do you usually dash a day? Varies. Ride bikes a lot. Do you live like near each other or? Pretty close. Yeah. Okay. I, I just want to ask a question. Is um, the boy with pressure of motion? Is that about you? Any, any nervous person. <laughs> is it about, is it about <laughs> anybody you know? It's a lot of nervous people running around. Yeah. Is that, does that bother you? Do you? Nervous people? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think there should be less nervous people in the world? Depends what they're nervous over. <laughs> well, well, I'm getting nervous so because Tommy keeps telling me. Both positive and negative <laughs> nervousness. Well, before we get too deep into this nervous <laughs> thing, why don't we play the sign, the boy with perpetual emotion. Perpetual nervousness. I don't know why I put perpetual emotion. Perpetual emotion. <laughs> the boy in perpetual emotion. <laughs> the boy with perpetual mo nervousness. I said get it. I'll <laughs> put it in later. <laughs> okay, that was the boy with perpetual nervousness from the Feelies from their album Crazy Rhythms. Do you guys have any plans for the rest of the summer? I'm going to get to see you. Oh, uh, yeah, we're probably going to be playing New York in July. Great. In July? Yeah. Any, any, <laughs> any foreseeable uh, plans for, you know, any time after that? Are you just taking things as they come? Well, Take we're working on, like, setting up a tour right now in the United States. Oh. Ah. So, we'll be doing that. Are you working on um, playing with someone, or who would you like to play with, you know, rather, you know, go out and tour with? Or would you just rather do it yourself? Well, we'd rather do it ourselves, but it really depends what the situation is, what the band is. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's um, economically, economically feasible right now to go on a tour by yourself? Is it possible? It's hard to say at this point. I really don't know. Think the album's going to take off? No. No way. <laughs> Why? Well, it seems to us that it's the type of album that will just take like a long period of time, it's, it's kind of slow moving and it doesn't hit you like really at first. That's the way we'd like to actually promote the album, 
it's over a long period of time. It has gotten good reviews though, hasn't it? Yeah, I think uh, probably radio is pretty important, kind of like really high in the charts. Like the songs being long and, you know, the mix being what it is, I don't think we're going to get, you know, a lot of airplay. Do you know if you're getting any airplay around? Uh, we, yeah, we're getting some airplay. I don't think enough to, like, you know, push the album, like, you just hide into the charts. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We play it all the time. Do you like um, going for the, the uh, longer uh, guitar solos and stuff? Do you like that? Basically, do you do, you do that, do you do that live? When you're, when you're playing, do you go for the solos? Uh, the solos are, like, real worked out. They're, I mean, that's as long as, like, we play them live, depending on how fast the song goes. Mm -hmm. But all the parts, there's very little, like, improvising. Some of the guitar parts and vocal parts, but mostly the songs are like real tightly arranged. Do um, how was your pre like I've never seen you on on stage, and I apologize for that. But how was your presence on stage? Do you usually uh, get frenetic and uh, and uh, get the audience into a frenzy? Are, are you? Uh, well, we're not sure about the audience. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like building the way uh, a song. One of our songs kind of builds, the set starts at one level, gets faster and more intense. How, how, have, you, how have you been, how, what kind of feedback have you been getting in the clubs? Do they, you know, really seem to enjoy the shows or like, do they like at the mug clubs just kind of like sit and... No, uh, they dance and watch. <laughs> they kind of like dance and, and watch in the place. <laughs> We're starting to run out of time. Is, is there anything that we haven't touched upon that you really would like to get across? I'm sure there's something. I'd like to ask you something. <laughs> um, Sorry. I, I, I read something in um, one of the rock you know, trade papers, and it, it seemed to me to be true after listening to your stuff, you know, you know, your music, that there's like a spiritual element to a lot of the stuff you do. And it's sort of weird because it seems like it, it kind of binds you together, makes you tighter musically. Is that true? Do you feel anything like that? <laughs> By that, do you mean uh, as a band, as a unit? Um, as performers or yeah. just in songwriting? Um, well, probably, I guess probably it must stem from your songwriting, considering that you guys, you know, are, are the base there. Um, is, there some, is there some kind of spiritual thing, bond that you guys have, you think? Well, it's not an organized... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Phantom Captain. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, uh, that's just about all the time that we have for this uh, this interview with the Feelies. I'm Mike Dugan, and uh, I'm Susie Albright. And we'd like to thank uh, our producer Tammy Gershoni and our engineer Greg Al, and our assistant producer Naomi Regelson. This and Glenn Mercer and Bill Million for coming. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank